In this exercise, we'll cover the maintenance procedures for our SpinCat 250. The SpinCat line features downhole tools for cleaning coil tubing units, specifically the removal of plugs, scale, and failed linings. The SC250 model features operating pressures up to 5,000 psi and flows from 1 to 3 barrels per minute. The tools required for these procedures include the two SC250-105 wrenches that came with your spin cat, a slot screwdriver, pick, modified snap ring pliers, hex wrenches, a chain wrench, blue goop anti-seize, and grease. A press will also come in handy when installing the shaft seals. In addition to the tools, you will also need a service kit or overhaul kit, shown here. Before we get started, let's review the main components of the SpinCat 250. The head, the gland, body, inlet nut, weep seal, and two port screws. Begin disassembly by securing in a vise with the inlet nut facing up. Using a pick, remove the weep seal. Remove the two port screws with a slot screwdriver. Using the two SC250-105 wrenches, loosen the inlet nut. Note the lower wrench is on the flats for the gland. Unscrew the inlet nut. Note the shaft seal in the inlet nut. We'll remove that seal and the o-ring at the base of the threads in a moment. Using your pick, remove the carbide seat from the inside of the shaft. Note the chamfer side is facing up. Now remove the high pressure seal. Notice how the o-ring on the seal is off center. Make certain the narrow side is down when reassembling later. Now unscrew the body from the gland. You may need a chain wrench to loosen the body at first. Slide the body off the shaft assembly and set aside. At this point, viscous fluid may come out of the assembly at the bottom. This is to be expected. Remove the two WG009 bearing rings from the top of the shaft. Slide the brass sleeve off exposing the assembly on the shaft. Use a 1 8 inch hex wrench to loosen the two collar screws and remove the collar. You may need to pry the two halves apart with a slot screwdriver. Note the sanded edge on the heads of these two screws. It's important they line up flush when reassembling. With the collar off, remove the weight set. Note the three notches in the weight set match the three posts on the hub. Now remove the hub and spring together. The spring has special ends that fit into the notches on the hub and the collar. Note the relieved groove on the collar faces up. The spring rests on that groove. Unscrew the collar halves with a 5 seconds inch hex wrench. Remove the two SC009 bearing rings from the bottom of the shaft and set aside for cleaning. Slide the gland assembly up and off the shaft. The remaining shaft and head should look like this. Now place the gland assembly in a vise with the threads facing up. Remove the o-ring with a pick. The gland assembly has two shaft seals. Gently pry out the first shaft seal with a slot screwdriver. Set aside. Remove the second shaft seal the same way. Repeat the procedure with the inlet nut, removing the o-ring as shown and the shaft seal as well. Your disassembly is now complete. Wash all parts in solvent and blow dry. Examine the wear items and replace where necessary. These are the key wear items. First, the high pressure seal, the carbide seat, high temperature shaft seals, and the bearing sets. You'll also want to check the O-rings for wear or damage. Each of these items is included in our routine service kit, along with viscous fluid, an applicator, and anti-seize. We'll review both the service kit and overhaul kit at the tail end of this video. Note there are a total of four bearing rings for this spin cap model. The two SC009 bearings shown at left have a larger inner diameter than the two WG009 rings on the right. The two larger diameter rings are placed on the shaft first, just above the gland, where the shaft is thicker. The two smaller diameter rings will go on last, closest to the inlet nut. Begin the reassembly process at the press, where you will install the shaft seals and o-rings in the gland assembly and the inlet nut. Begin by placing the o-ring at the base of the threads. Next, we'll install the two shaft seals. 
For all our shaft seals, we recommend using P80 Grippet or a similar lubricant for installation. Press the first shaft seal into place using the spacer tool as shown. The first seal goes in lip side facing down. Press the second seal into place once again using the SC250106 spacer tool. This second seal goes in with the lip side facing up. Set the assembly aside. Still at the press, repeat the procedure with the inlet nut. Replace the o-ring at the base of the inlet nut threads. Prep the shaft seal with lubricant and press into place, this time with the lip side facing down. With the gland assembly and inlet nut prepped, let's go back to the vise. Secure the head shaft in the vise. Apply a generous amount of grease to the shaft seals in the gland and at the same time grease the shaft itself. Slide the gland onto the shaft. Now put the two SC009 bearing rings on the shaft. The collar goes on next. Place the two halves around the shaft and join together with the hex screws. Use a 5 30 seconds hex wrench for this step and be certain to tighten the two halves evenly so the gap is the same on each side. See how the relieved groove on the collar faces up? With the first collar in place, note where the notch is to receive the end of the spring. Attach one spring end to the hub as shown and slide the spring onto the shaft with the hub end up. The bottom end of the spring will fit neatly into the notch on the collar as shown. You can use the notch on either side of the collar for the spring end. Now place the weight set onto the shaft. Match the three notches in the weight set with the three posts on the hub. Place the two halves of the second collar around the shaft and screw together with a 1 8 inch hex wrench. Remember, this is where you need to match up the sanded edge of the screw with the collar to create a flush mount as shown. Make certain the spaces are even on both sides of the collar. Slide the brass sleeve over the assembly with the notches facing up. Replace the two WG009 bearing rings on top of the shaft. You are now ready to place the body over the shaft assembly. Prior to that, brush blue goop on the threads of the gland. Slide the body over the assembly and hand tighten using a wrench on the gland flats as shown. With the body on, we'll reinstall the high pressure seal and carbide seat. Grease the seal generously and note the narrow end of the seal goes in first. Press the seal into the shaft far enough to leave a 1 16th inch recess as shown. This is where you will place the carbide seat. Remember, the chamfer side is up in this assembly. Next, fill the body with viscous fluid. We recommend GP040 viscous fluid, which we sell here at Stone Age, or a commercially available product like Chevron Hypersyn. As you are filling the body with viscous fluid, pause several times to spin the body and lift it, which will help settle the fluid into the body and force the air bubbles up and out. Keep filling with fluid until it covers the top bearing and no more bubbles appear. Next, brush blue goop on the threads and screw the inlet nut into the body. Note how viscous fluid oozes out of the ports as you tighten the inlet nut. This is to be expected. Clean off the excess with a rag and tighten the entire assembly using the two 2.5 two inch wrenches. Replace both port screws and the weep seal. Note the lip side of the seal faces down, covering the weep holes on the inlet nut. Your SpinCat 250 reassembly is now complete. However, before we finish up, let's take a look at the maintenance support available from Stone Age. We strongly recommend keeping one or more of these kits on hand to facilitate speedy service. First, we have a toolkit, which has only one item, the SC250106 spacer tool, shown here. It will help when reinstalling the shaft seals at the press, and we highly recommend having one. This is the service kit for routine spin cat maintenance. It contains written instructions with diagrams, new o-rings, a packet of anti-seize, and viscous fluid with the syringe applicator. This is for injecting viscous fluid into the tool after removing the port screws. It also contains a new high pressure seal and carbide seat. 
The overhaul kit naturally contains more items when it's time for a major rebuild. It has written instructions, high temperature shaft seals, port screws, a carbide seat and high pressure seal, a packet of anti-seize, a spring, o-rings, new bearing sets, a brass sleeve, viscous fluid, and a weep seal. Proper maintenance will improve both the performance and longevity of your spin cat. If you are performing routine service or an overhaul procedure, we recommend using all the new parts in the kit to make the most of your downtime. Thanks for your attention, and remember, our customer service specialists are always on hand to address any technical issues you may have.